talking with two superb actresses, Betty Davis and Peggy Wood. The, the award that you're about to receive, uh, not here tonight, but tomorrow, is, uh, looks exactly like this. That's really a classy looking award. It's a straw hat. It's very attractive. It's, it's called the Council of Stock Theaters Straw Hat. Well, this is this is not the one. This was two years ago. Isn't it? I think it's. Think it's There's that hat in a. In, I think it's very nicely done. That. It's not amber, but what, what would you call it? Blue sight. I don't know what that's called. And somehow they suspended it in there, which fascinates me because it doesn't look as if anything were holding the hat up. It's the magic of theater holding it up. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Oh yeah. I think it's a yeah. funny thing about it being called straw hat, and uh, that that should have. Uh, come about to be its uh, uh, label. Mm -hmm. And because in the beginning they called it sort of barn shows. And yeah. They didn't call it straw hat. I wonder where, the, I never knew where the straw hat came from. I have a feeling some newspaper reviewer started calling it the straw hat circuit. And, yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, maybe you that's think what... anybody wears a straw hat? Do you think anybody wears a hat anymore? I don't know, you never see straw hats at summer theaters. Oh, well, some of those people I brought down the aisle in the Cape Plows had straw hats. <laughs> oh, they did? It was that long ago, definitely. Did they ever tip you? No. No, they you know, don't tip in this country. That surprised me in London. I, when I first went over there, I went to the yes, theater. Yes, I was surprised. And the lady that. stood there saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I didn't know uh, what to offer a As cough I drop. Was... I didn't know what she was after. <laughs> you tip the person who takes yes, you to I the was And in surprised. France, they don't just cough gently. They, they, they make you know that you... <laughs> cough right on you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so you mentioned coughing and it, yes, it happens. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Betty, can you, can you tell a friend if her work is lousy. <laughs> You're always confronted with that in, in, in somewhere in your career. You see a friend and... I have a lovely story about that one. All right. Do I cut into you? No, not at all. I, I didn't have an answer. <laughs> um, Jane Cowell, who was pretty well known, had a very dear friend, but was a mediocre actress. And uh, because she was an old friend, uh, Jane went to the opening night and knew she had to go backstage mm. and say something. So she swept into the room with her hand out and said, aren't you glad you're you, and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because this is the most you guess the experience you can have. Mm -hmm. If you've seen a play that you really it just didn't work, and the friend didn't just... What to say is... Um, <laughs> I get it's, ter it's terrible, but that's a marvelous line. That's like the bachelor who stayed a bachelor all, uh, many, many years, and all his friends married, though, no, because they all had children. And so he thought, oh, most of them were hideous, the children, of course. <laughs> so he used to say, my, that is a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think is the same idea. You know? <laughs> it would be pretty hard to do, Richard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would but be, it, especially uh, after an opening night. It would be impossible. Mm -hmm. Maybe later, if they really came to you and wanted to discuss it, you could. But not after the hell of an opening night, because there's nothing worse than this in the world for the act, for the performer. <laughs> you know, terrible. Well, you don't know how we ever get through it, any of us. I never have known. You both. You both. Um, or in the theater and also married and had families and so on. Can you, can either of you conceive of, if you had it to do over today, where there's an article in the day's paper where less, more and more young women interviewed say they don't want to marry or if they do, they want to wait a long time. Can you say whether you today, the same you? Would, I would have waited would, much longer. Would you? Oh yeah. yeah. I wouldn't. I waited long enough. <laughs> <laughs> What makes the difference? Why, why would you have waited much longer? Oh, I think I would have been wiser in my choice had I waited longer. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was grown up enough to know, yeah. you know, what was right for me. Well, does it have to do with the fact that you said you felt and were raised to believe that sex and marriage went together? So if you were raised in an age when it was thought that they don't necessarily, might that have made it easier to Well, that would make it quite a lot easier, Richard, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would I'm make not... it a lot easier. Yes, yeah. that's true. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I often wonder about somebody who ha has achieved stardom and all and seen their name up in lights over the title and all that stuff. If they can remember the first time that they found that it didn't solve all their problems. You know what I mean? I mean, no. for example, you can say 
uh, well, for example, Miss Wood, you can think of Betty saying, now here I'm an Academy Award winner and I'm envied and admired and loved even, as you can tell from the applause whenever you come out. And yet here I am sitting here at home, bored, depressed. <laughs> it's not magic. Can you remember when well, that? Well, it isn't, and, 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 and that part of it, to me, was never the great part of it anyway. That, yeah. that, that was a, a beautiful thing, and, and in the eyes of the world, your reward, but mm -hmm. the doing of it was always the great thrill to me, yes. you know. And the acceptance of, 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 of the name over and all uh, is a very necessary part of it. One, one would wish for it, but it, it doesn't solve anything, because actually, from that moment on, you have to be better and better. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. this is, and each year, you know, each year you, you have a, a standard you set for yourself. And it gets tougher and tougher. And you yeah. are often bored, and, and, and in this day of no yourself. scripts, and you have to, you're in the position of trying to top yourself, this is right. And in a day of very few scripts, this is even more difficult. You see, because what do you find that can top yourself, you know? Of, of some of the great parts you've had before. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about this Straw Hat Theater. There was the chance for the young actor to get what is achieved in, in England, where they play the classics in their, in their, well, they're not summer theater, their repertory. This almost gave uh, the American actor a chance for some repertory. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And there's where they learned uh, to, to play in the classics, which is the real way to match yourself up against what is the great stuff. And uh, these, th these little theaters did it. Yeah. Because all kinds of actors with all kinds of ability give their eyes and ears to play these classics because they know that is the basis of their work. And there's where they got it. Now they don't get it anymore. Now they have packages. Packages, packages are, are plays that play in all the summer theaters on a circuit. Mm -hmm. And they can be just a, a business of um, earning a, a summer salary, that's all. It's not that's a business right. of learning anything that you wanted to do. I mean, I never was asked to go and do any Shakespeare in, in the summer theater. No. Oh. We never got a chance to do it. The only way you got to do a Shakespeare thing was to have a well-known star whose uh, manager decided he could afford the money to lose on Shakespeare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I get a chance to go to play Portia because Winthrop Ames wanted to do a production of The Merchant of Venice for uh, uh, George Arliss. George this, Arliss. You were absolutely smashing his fortune. That's what I thought, too. You were. <laughs> you were. I had forgotten that I saw you do that. You were just marvelous. I thought there was a wonderful chance, and I would have liked to have done many more, but the only other chance I had to do was a last package uh, in the summer theater when I did The Taming of the Shrew with Ronald Peters and a yeah. very fine Lloyd Bridges and a right. lot of people. Yes. They were too far between. They're yeah, yeah. too far between. We should have had a great many more opportunities. almost caught you doing it. Talk about nostalgia night. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I am old. I've decided tonight. <laughs> I am really old. Well, now, come on. That was about, what, 20 years ago? Two's company. Two's company 20 years ago, wasn't it? That'd be uh, 1972. 50, no, it was a little about 55. I'll look the date on it. Don't tell me. <laughs> That was a musical review you did on Broadway. Musical review. Well, Why I came you back after 20 years. Why don't you do Broadway again? I saw you the last time you were on Broadway. I hate, and they... I hate theater. Isn't it terrible? And I, res I, I, I feel badly. What? I feel badly I hate theater hmm. at this age. I feel badly because I should do theater. That's it. And I could play many more parts in theater. Yeah. Uh, today at my age that, than I ever will be able to play on the screen again, you know? It's, it's a tragedy. I, I, I don't know how I can get over it. The only trouble with seeing you in the theater is that when you enter, the applause goes on so long that you miss your train going home. I saw, <laughs> no, I oh, saw, God. I saw Night, of, Night of the Iguana when you were Wasn't in it. And when you came on, 
You must have had to find things to do and while you know, the applause was ending. And you know, an absolute rule in the theater is if you get an opening hand, you yeah. never bow to an audience. You just accept it and go on with your play. I had no alternative. But that is the power of motion pictures. Man. See, motion uh -huh. pictures are extraordinary image to people. And if they ever sort of take you to their hearts, uh, even in this country, they're, they're always loyal to you. England even more, but true here too. I had to take a bow, or we could never have done the play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and right. And most unprofessional, you just are, this is just not allowed. It was almost as if you had done a song. You just had to stop. Oh, and... I tried everything, too. You know, I tried everything. Are there ways to kill applause on stage? I tried everything. <laughs> no, this I is mean... not boasting. This was a, and it was a wonderful compliment to me, yeah. but it was a distressing thing, too. I have heard actors and actresses say, I killed that laugh. Yeah. Not, not on an entrance, probably, because there's not much you can do about that. But if you have a line that may or may not get a laugh, or you want to cut the laugh short, they well, say there are ways of killing especially it. Especially if it's the laugh of the other actor. That's very <laughs> simple. <laughs> yes. Meeny, 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 meeny. Oh, I never did. Listen, not <laughs> me, not me, what ever. You, I you never approved of anything like that. I, I think it's that. terrible. But if you, had, if you wanted you to kill work, somebody's when you laugh. When you work with some actors who do, that's their profession. Trying to ruin your performance. <laughs> really? That's true, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Miss Wood knows that, absolutely. Who are some of those people? <laughs> no. Well, I'll tell you what I, I did with a song in, in London. I deliberately killed applause. It was such a tender, beautiful, lovely thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if I had applause, it would have been a, a mistake. Yes. And I had to have them, the audience go, ah, like that, at the end of the song. That's right. That's all. But how'd you do it? It's not automatic. It's not easy. This is it's a way of doing it. This is a way of doing it. Yeah. Sort of signaling. And that's sometimes <coughs> the most beautiful applause you get in the world. Yes. Sometimes if a curtain comes down at the end of the play and there isn't one sound mm -hmm. uh, at mm -hmm. the end for a, you know, a minute or two, yeah. you know yeah. that they are with you. But once did I get applause on that song. I was playing in um, Liverpool, and uh, the theatre had just been renovated, and it wasn't much of a renovation, I might say. But anyway, I, I had a scene with the leading man in one. Now, you don't know what in one is. Yes, he does in one it's every It's just, yeah. just across the footlights. Down the front. Thing. So um, it was a scene in a private room at a, a restaurant. And it was in the period of the 90s. And uh, this lovely song came about. And I was singing it, and I heard the audience go, Whoo! And I, he was facing me, and I was standing up. Over from that side came a mouse <laughs> or a rat the light, footlights enlarged him so that he, he, he was, could be seen against the, 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 <laughs> those things there. Oh. And the man, playing me, didn't know what had happened. And the sound of the audience got worse and worse and worse. And I had to go on singing. And I had a chiffon dress that had a lot of lace on it. And I said, if it's going to pass back of me, and he's got his little claws caught in my dress. Uh. By this time, everybody in the company was standing in the wings, didn't know what had happened. And finally, I looked out of the side of my eyes and it was going off that entrance and had not caught in my dress. And when I uh, finished the song, I got the biggest round of applause I've ever had, <laughs> which I didn't want. Yes. No. <laughs> Did you ever find out if it was a mouse or a rat? Or it doesn't much matter at a time like that, I guess, Well, you it? can't tell the size if there was a... If there was a uh, the footlights through the shadow of the, uh, of the mouse there, yeah. and he might have been that big for all I knew. Wouldn't well. it have been fun to have picked him up and said, I thought the critics came opening night. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's terrible. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. So I hope, please don't write in critics if you're offended. No. We don't care. No. <laughs> do, you, do you find, Miss Wood, that there's too much honoring of actors. Uh, it's an odd thing to ask you the day before an award, but some people are of this opinion that you can just, there's too much award giving. Um, well, this, 
Seems to be the month for it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I, there are many too many. I don't approve yep. of it very much. It's too bad we haven't got any kind of a decoration that goes to people in the tops of their professions, such as have uh, in other countries. Mm -hmm. Like and a knighthood, a, a real, a real, a real award. But it, is, that, it uh, isn't yeah. done by publicity, mm -hmm. um, and it's done by people who uh, know the kind of award they're giving. I mean, you get first, you get Sir Lawrence Olivier. Now you get Lord Olivier. That's mm -hmm. going up, and um, you have other. The ladies are dames, and then there are other awards given in, in other countries. Don't set such a variety. I, won't. I don't <laughs> want you to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But uh, so I think there's going to be a little much of a muchness. Mm -hmm. Of course, that but is uh, probably because in my time nobody gave any awards to anybody except that somebody um, ditched me out of an award for the. Um, Mama show that I did for so yes, long. Sure. That, that was the Emmy, wasn't it? That, let's see, the Ma sure, that would be the yeah, Emmy Award. It would be right. the Emmy. Yeah. No, sure. Well, I get done out of that. But in England, that That's uh, there's no national That's honor for an actor here, is there? No national, no national honor, no. The way there is for a knighthood. No. Then, of course, no. the English names go better with no Sir, Sir Michael Redgrave. Is, Sounds nice. Beautiful. Sir Chill Wills, for example, wouldn't have the magic. So. <laughs> Maybe it's just as well. We have a message. I break her up. We have a message. We'll do it. Don't have much time left. Miss Wood, you were saying it's too bad that there's no uh, repertory, but the, I guess college drama supplies that for oh, my, a yes. lot of kids who get a and chance not to. not only that, it's the only place you can get to see the yeah. classics if you're an adult. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. doing beautiful work. Yeah. You're just, very involved in that, aren't you, Trey? Encouraging well, I was. Drama. I started to, to, to have this thing come about, and we had a whole uh, arrangement of how it would work. And then, of course, we couldn't get any money to do it. Yeah. And the government didn't want to give us any money. No. No. They didn't approve of that. As you uh, see, the government has a way of feeling what Mark Conley calls the blight of the Puritans, that uh, anything, so many of these things that we know should be done in a cultural way, atavistically, the congressman underneath feels it's a frivolity. Absolutely. And, 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 well, we've uh, never been a nation who helped the arts. No. At all. And uh, uh, so, where was I? <laughs> well, we're talking about college drama. Oh, the college for... drama. Then yeah. um, we finally did, uh, did break through. Uh, after the war, um, colleges were building theaters and mm. cultural centers, and not only colleges, but uh, communities. But oh, they didn't many. have anything to put in them. <coughs> right. And now they have. And now they have extraordinary performances. I was there uh, and went out to California to see the regional uh, performances. And then I saw those that had won uh, and were given in, uh, their awards by, uh, uh, for excellence. Mm -hmm. And there's no first, second, or third. Mm -hmm. It's just for excellence. Then a wonderful actress of the granny in the Beverly Hillbillies said that the theater and the entertainment world had been so wonderful to her. She has established a foundation, mm -hmm. and she gave to each one of the regional uh, best actor or actress $500. And then she gave another big one when they came into Washington, all 10 shows from all over the country. $2,000 to the young man. That is and $2,000 for the nice. young woman. Irene Ryan. Ryan. Yes. 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 Irene like, Ryan. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it was a, a, a beautiful thing. Just, she had been in vaudeville you know, all her life right. and her family before mm -hmm. her. And I have that feeling about the theater, what you could do. It was yeah. so, so moving. Marvelous. I was Marvelous. so touched. 
And, uh, if only they could get more theater on the road, you know. I've that's talked to the pe road. people think, oh, just in New York, of no. course, you know, New York, Los Angeles. It was by far the but... most exciting, yeah. and, and overall intelligent theater goers are out of New York. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's no question because I, I did one night stands for eight months with the Carl Sandburg show. Most incredible people come to the theater all over this country. Yeah. And of course, the college audiences, you know, so as, as you said, the, the beautiful little theaters they have in some of these colleges. They have a theater at Charlottesville, the University of Virginia. I can't tell you what a gem this is. <laughs> oh, it, 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 we, it was just. The acoustics just are so good, they can hear you down there. For a minute. <laughs> That's yeah. true, though. You're constantly just knocked out by facilities in, in small towns. Oh, or smaller and towns some auditoriums so, they've built yeah. are the most beautiful. But as you say, they don't have lots that go in. And they built these sensational, because most of our theaters are pretty uncomfortable and outmoded. Now, you know they really are. I know. Oh, and jam, and crowded, and uncomfortable. And New York theater audiences are no cup of tea either. I mean, they're a bit uh, snobbish. Well, no, they have a terrible time, really. Yeah. They're, they're built <clears throat> not for the comfort of the actors and certainly not for the comfort of the, oh, of no. the, of the people. And those that have been built since the war, as I say, in the outlying districts, are much more beautiful and much more interesting to play in. Oh, And marvelous. when you think, though, that <laughs> when there was that great burst of, of theaters being built <clears throat> in the 20s, and the Schubert's built them, mm -hmm. um, Winthrop Ames was then doing a lot of uh, yes. producing, a very distinguished gent. Definitely. And um, he thought he'd go around and see how these things were shaping up. So he went into the Plymouth and found that they had no dressing rooms on the ground floor. Everybody had to be. Right. Uh, oh. And then, but they it, then never he went thought actors were human beings until no. they were out in front. It did not yeah. matter how. Mi you don't know the choruses in this in this city where they dress down in these steam rooms. They're literally steam yeah. rooms with yeah. all the pipes for the whole theater. Yes. Yeah. You know, they never believed we were people yeah. until that curtain went up. You didn't That's care right. how miserable backstage. It's really incredible. Mr. Ames went in to see his own theater, the boom, and they'd forgotten to put a box office in. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, that is that's just jazz. something. Miss Wood, do you mind my being one of the last to congratulate you on your 80th birthday? Oh, yeah. We have a message from our local station. Tomorrow night, 90 Minutes with Jack Parr. Good night to two remarkable women, Betty Davis and Peggy Wood. Thank you for being here. It's a great pleasure. Good night.